So we've looked at three measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. The question now is which one is the best measure of central tendency or the most useful? So in a class poll, students are asked to choose their favorite pizza toppings for a year-end party. Eight students choose Hawaiian, five choose pepperoni, and nine choose uh, cheese pizza. Which central tendency is the best? Well, take a look at our values, Hawaiian, pepperoni, and cheese. Can we take a mean? No, there's, there's no average type of pizza unless you throw all the toppings on, uh, on one pizza. That one doesn't make any sense. There's also no median that's helpful here because you can't order Hawaiian pepperoni or cheese from least to greatest to find a middle. So which central tendency is the best? The mode. This is basically the one time the mode is the best measure of central tendency. Cheese repeated the most often, so cheese should be bought for the pizza. It doesn't mean you can't buy the other ones, but you should definitely make sure you have cheese. So when uh, our list isn't numerical and you can't calculate a mean or a median, the mode is going to be helpful. So we're going to run through a few examples to look at a, and compare the different central tendencies. A cleaning company has its products tested by, the government, by a government agency. The agency ran 10 tests and found that the cleaning company killed the following percentages of germs. And then we have a whole list of percentages and we've already gone ahead and calculated the mean, median, and mode for you. The question is, what central tendency would the company owner choose to advertise? Well, I would think that a company would want to advertise the highest that they could get away with, which in this case would be the mode. The company would probably want to say, we kill 99 cent percent of germs, and then they could say in like little brackets or fine print, most of the time. But what central tendency would the government prefer they use? Well, I think the government would, would probably prefer that that test where they only killed 61 or 67 percent of germs, those should get, uh, you know, those should be part of this measure. So I'm thinking that the government would probably choose that the mean is a better, uh, a better uh, percentage to advertise to the public, a better measure of that central tendency, so that people don't think that the company kills 99% of the germs all the time. There's lots of times where they miss and get less than 80%. So we saw this example in an earlier video where we had the CEO's salary that really brought the mean a whole lot higher. So which measure of central tendency is the best? For an, employer, for an employee arguing that they deserve a raise, I think they'd probably want to use the median or the mode. They could say that, look, the salary that's in the middle of this company or the most common salary is less than $30,000 a year. We need raises. The boss who wants to argue that they're paid enough maybe wants to use the mean because the mean says that, you know, on average, we all make $47,000 a year. So I think everyone's getting paid enough. Here's another place where uh, mean, median, and mode come up a lot. So here's Natalie's math grades per unit in her math course. So she got 39 in the first unit, then 75, 74, 73, 72, 70, 71, and 74. The mean, when we calculate this list, is 68.5%. The median is 72.5%. Uh, and the mode is those repeats of 74. So which central tendency is the best for understanding Natalie's math ability? Well, to be honest, I don't think any are the best. I'm going to say none. The, me the median and mode, they don't show where she struggled, right? 72.5 and 74. Well, I mean, she's getting in the 70s a lot, so that's really good, right? But it doesn't show that she really struggled in unit one and that this is probably something that she needs to work on. Meanwhile, the mean doesn't show her true strength as a math student. To say that, you know, she gets 
68.5 in the course, well, you know, on the bulk of her math ability, she's into the 70s, and she's a very solid student. But that one that one unit where she uh, struggled is dragging her way down. So I don't think that any one of these central tendencies is the best central tendency. And in this case, I think that the best way to get a full picture of Natalie's math ability is to look at the whole set of data and compare them to the mean, median, and mode.